Oh, so that's what I am. I'm the guy that takes the negative angle. Got it. That's my new bit. Okay, okay, cool. We can do that. Hello and welcome in friends. We are here with another video. That's right. The new DBD DLC has come out. I had to say that slowly because wow, that's a lot of letters. And it is Sadako from The Ring. I'm very excited about this one. I was very, very excited about this. If you follow the channel for any amount of time, you know, I made a video where I said this chapter changes everything. And look, I actually still stand by the general sentiment of it. I think some people maybe just read the title because the critical comments were kind of saying, ah, oh, this changes nothing. But I do think it changes some things, but we're not here to debate that. This is not, this is not me here to, uh, try to clap back at something that happened, you know, all that time ago, because, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinions. Now, that is super cool whenever you whenever you click on Sadako and she comes out of her little well. That's very, very cool. One thing you might notice up at the top, look at that. DOS underscore food TTV. Could it be? Yes, I stream. So if you want to pop by and see the best streams on Twitch, well, that's not what you're going to find. But if you want to see a funny man saying funny things, hey, I think that's what I bring to the table. Now, we have Sadako here. Uh, first impressions, the design is great. Uh, that little movement she just made was actually her basic attack. It's very cool. I'm a fan of that. Um, she will occasionally pop up towards the uh, towards the screen, so don't let that startle you when she does it. Um, it's kind of like how Trickster will occasionally wink at the screen. It's kind of neat. I don't mind it. But uh, I was hoping she would do it while I did this description before we get into her perks and power, but I guess that's just not a thing we can get. So we are going to move to the character info screen here. And, oh, she just did it! Are you kidding me? Right as a, oh, dude. All right, anyway, we have this whole backstory here. If you wanna read that yourself, uh, you certainly can, but that's not really a thing we're concerned with. I have seen Ringu, uh, as well as the initial ring. So I am familiar with the character. I don't really need to know anything else about that, but uh, a couple things to a couple things to knock out here. She is listed as a short character. In fact, she is so short that the hooks, <laughs> delightfully, the hooks have been lowered so that it doesn't look weird when she throws people on them. It's actually kind of funny. Um, she has a basic tear radius, basic movement speed, and one 115% uh, movement speed. Easy, easy. Uh, her power, it's convoluted. It's a lot. But you can pause it and you can read all this, or I can basically tell you the, the general gist of it. It comes down to the special abilities, manifestation and projection. Manifestation, she goes invisible. She does not move any quicker, but she can move around the map unseen, right? Uh, she can uncloak just like the Wraith. Unlike the Wraith, she doesn't make the sound cue, but also unlike the Wraith, she does not have collision. You know, with Wraith, the whole thing is you wanna stand between the survivor and a window or a pallet and make it where they can't get to their nearest source of safety. Sadako can't do that. However, she also doesn't uh, have the shimmer effect and she doesn't make the little breathing noises that you hear. So it's a bit of a trade off there, but it definitely feels like a weaker version of the Wraith. With her projection, it's like how Freddy can teleport to generators, but instead of generators, she teleports to televisions around the map. And if a survivor is near one of those televisions, when she teleports to it, uh, she will hit them with the condemned or she will add to their condemned status effect. And if that gets high enough, uh, by teleporting to enough televisions, she can worry that survivor on the spot. Now, full stop, point blank, this is a really weak power. This is not good. Now, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna tip my hand here, right? I'm so frustrated and this was initially going to be a much more negative video. I'm trying so hard to see the good aspects of it. And there, there is good, right? But the negative thing is that this is a hit and run killer in a time where hit and run killers are as weak as they've ever been. They have never been weaker than they are right now. Think Legion, think Ghostface, think Clown. These are the killers that are struggling right now. The ones who do best when they injure a lot of people instead of just focusing down one person. And I know that we heard about, you know, people were really upset that it seemed like we were just getting uh, anti-loop killers after anti-loop killers, right? Trickster and Artist and Nemesis and Pyramid Head. We were just getting all of these, you know, Death Slinger. It felt like we were on a real run of anti-loop killers. Uh, you know, the twins even to some extent, but I would say they were probably a break in it as well. <laughs> I get it, right? They did something different with this one. 
and people are probably excited right people are excited that they don't have yet another insanely strong anti-loop killer with that not not to insinuate that trickster is insanely strong by the way <laughs> um, but with that with that being said this power is very very weak and it needs a lot to change before she comes out we might we might touch on that a little bit later let's get to the perks right let's get to the perks because that's where i start to have some nicer things to say firstly scourge hook floods of uh, floods of rage i'm sorry i can't read that's you would think as an english major i could read but i guess that's just too hard for me uh, you form a psychic connection with the entity and alter the rules of the trial. At the start of the trial, up to four hooks are changed, which, by the way, is base for Scourge hooks. That is literally every Scourge hook perk. Uh, you see their auras in white. When a survivor is unhooked from a Scourge hook, all survivors have their auras revealed to you for five seconds. That is really cool. That is a great information perk. Is it OP? Is it super strong? No, but this is one I'm excited to play around with. I actually am very excited to have this perk in the game. This is the kind of perk I want to see added. Ones that aren't just, you know, disastrously strong, just going to murder the other side with no effort. No, but it's good. It's a fun perk. I think Floods of Rage continues the tradition of very fun Scourge hooks. Call of Brine is the next one. And firstly, I really like that artwork for it. I think I think the artwork is actually really cool. Uh, your psychic abilities influence technology in devastating ways. After damaging a generator, this perk becomes active for 60 seconds. Now, one thing I should note here, by the way, is that all of these I'm showing, I was reading off of the character info screen, um, which I, I should have been doing. I should have been doing the one that shows them at their maximum. So, Scourge Hook Floods of Rage, 5 seconds is the base, 7 seconds is tier 3. With Call of Brine, the base is 150 regression, the uh, maximum is 200 at tier 3. So, basically, when you kick... <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. That, that kind of jump scared me. When you kick a generator, it takes on the regression that would come with Hex Ruin. I like this perk a lot. I'm very excited to see how this perk operates. By the way, there is another thing. Uh, when somebody hits a good skill check on that generator uh, that you just kicked, you'll get a loud noise notification. Now, what's interesting about that is it says good skill check. So it seems like if you hit greats, you can actually sneak by without them knowing you've got them back on that generator, which rewards good play. That's nice. I like to see that. Uh, Call of Brian, very excited for this perk as well. Lastly, we have Merciless Storm. This is the most interesting and probably also the most F tier. <laughs> Your horrible trauma is felt by everyone. When a generator reaches 90% progress, survivors working on the generator will be faced with continuous skill checks. If they miss or stop repairing, the generator is blocked for 20 seconds. Now, this one is one I need to see in action. I need to see how this one goes because one of two things will be true, right? One of two things. Thing one. This is useless because hitting skill checks is a very easy thing to do. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very good. However, I want to leave the option out there for thing two. Survivors focus in so strongly on these skill checks that if you are running a perk that let's say, let's say you're running tinkerers or something with this where you know a gen's about to pop or maybe you just hear it and you go over that way, you know that they've been working on a gen so you go to check it out. Well, maybe they're so focused on it that you get an easy hit or maybe even a grab. It's possible. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I am saying it's possible. So all things considered, this is a fun set of perks. I think this is very good for the game. I am enthusiastic to see Sadako's perks uh, brought into the game. Now, the survivor is Yochi Asakawa. And I really guys, I'm sorry, my pronunciation will always be bad. It's I, I get I get English words wrong. <laughs> I get English words wrong. Now, on him, because blood points are finite, I don't have every perk maxed out. That's uh that's a little that's a little unfortunate. But we'll go on and we'll uh we'll go on and we'll we'll call it we'll call it as it is. It's 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 fine. It's fine, guys. It's not a big deal. So he has let's go to his character info. Parental guidance, empathetic <laughs> empathic connection i tried to make that a different word than it was and then i realized and i tried to change mid word and uh you like yikes it wasn't good uh and then boon dark theory now remember these are the level one definitions uh it's uh, i'm sorry i have not been able to put as many blood points in him so 
Uh, let's start with parental guidance. You have inherited the ability to hear the dead, and now the dead warn you of danger. After stunning the killer by any means, your scratch marks, pools of blood, and grunts of pain are hidden for eight seconds. This is all about getting a stun in and getting out, right? So if you think about pairing this with something like Smash Hit, which gives you 150% movement speed for those same that same amount of time, yeah, this is not going to be used. This is a this is a pretty weak perk. But with that being said, I don't mind it. I think the concept is kind of fun that if you get a stun, um, you can kind of hide. I think really where this becomes most useful, I had mentioned Smash Hit, but I actually think Decisive Strike is where this gets most interesting. If you can Decisive Strike and Sprint Burst away while using Parental Guidance, there's some value in this perk, so I don't want to say it's F tier. This this one could actually have some decent usage. Uh, Empath... <laughs> English. Empathic Connection. Your presence physically projects itself to those in danger. Whenever another survivor is injured, they can see your aura. And by the way, this is 32 meters. I think it goes way up to like 96 or something like that. So it gets to be most of the map. You heal others 10% uh, faster. So I think that's probably going to go up as well. Maybe 25, 30%. Basically, this makes you, you're, you're the team, you're the team mom. You know, you're the group healer. And I think that's awesome. A lot of people have said, oh, that's so weak. You know, honestly, I think this is a really good perk. I think this is one that's going to be very popular. Some people love being the healers. Uh, if nothing else, it's going to help out with the tomes where you have to heal people. This is just empathy turned on its head. And I actually think that this is going to be a good one for solo queue. So I like this one. I'm a fan. But then again, I run pharmacy most games. So, <laughs> so I'm clearly not right in the head. And I definitely have a predisposition for healing. Lastly, Boon Dark Theory. Uh, uh. <laughs> this is bad. This is really bad. This is the worst thing they've done since Jex Notes. Oh yeah, that other Boon that almost broke the game. I'm going to save that long-ass definition, and I'm just going to tell you, it makes it where, at maximum, you get a 4% haste bonus. That means you are moving 4% faster Ha! Ooh, man. If you're near this boon, your looping is going to go through the roof. This is ridiculously strong. I don't like it. I am not excited for this. I think this is about as bad as it could have been. This is proof that behavior cannot handle the concept of boons. I don't know how it is that they handle scourge hooks so well. They have yet to make an overpowered scourge hook. But boons, they just go out of their minds. They just lose their minds. This is ridiculously bad. Are you kidding me? And when, But when I say ridiculously bad, I am not saying that this is ridiculously weak, mind you. I am saying this is ridiculously bad, as in this is gross. This is so gross. Why is it that scourge hooks, which require you to actually do something skillful, are, on the whole, a little weak. They're fun, but they don't tend to be very strong. But then boons, which require no skill at all. And by the way, I've kind of switched over. I'm basically a survivor main now. I got so tired of the grind. I might make a whole video on why I got tired of playing killer. But, uh, so it's not like I am only looking out for the killers. I'm looking out for balance. And I'm, this is, oh, this is so strong. This is so strong. Oh man, this this is the one that I had to cool down before I made the video about it because when I first saw this, I was I was angry. I was very angry. Um, too angry for being talking about a video game. You know, I probably need to get a life. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know this overall. My thoughts on this chapter would be that Sadako is really weak. I think she's an F tier killer, and I know that that's like, hey, that's a bit of a knee, knee jerk reaction. I'll go into that at another time. I don't want to keep you here for too long. I try not to keep videos. I don't want to go over like 15 minutes because I don't want to take too much time out of your day. And by the way, I hope you're having a great day. Let me know what you think of the new perks. Let me know what you think of the new killer, the new survivor, anything new. Do you like the new chapter? Are you excited about it? I'm excited about it. I still, look, I, I want to leave you with one thing, right? When Ghostface was in the PTB, not only was Ghostface F tier, Ghostface was the worst killer in the game, and it wasn't even kind of close, right? When Ghostface was in the PTB, 
the killer was a broken mess it was a disaster and we're all like oh well it's behavior there's no way they fix it before ghostface comes out and you know what though there are still issues and there were still issues ghostface was made much much better before the ptb uh, actually before the content from the ptb actually went live so all of that to say this is not definitive right there is room for improvement that's why you do a public test build so that you can see what needs to be improved changed yada 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 all of that is fair and i want to put it out there because i don't like to be blindly negative negative. and also the perks especially for sadako are really fun i'm excited about those i do think sadako is currently an f tier killer just very very weak not good uh she does have a cool mori if you're interested in seeing that let me know but i would imagine you've probably uh, give give let me know uh, have you already watched the formats yeah be honest be honest now tell me <laughs> anyway um this is an intriguing chapter i had hoped for the best what we got was great sound design the actual movement of this killer is really cool to see it's very it's very cool it's a very cool chapter but in terms of this hyper sweaty climate we see with dbd right now this is not going to go well but that those are just my thoughts right i don't know everything as i've acknowledged in the past i am capable of making very bad takes let me know if you disagree below i'm not going to keep you any longer thank you so much for watching this one please do consider checking me out on twitch we do a bit of streaming it's fun until then i have been das food goodbye friends